and murky mists of time, our ape-like ancestors came down on their first hesitant forays out of the trees and onto the savannah. I suppose at the grandest of philosophical scales, it's still up for debate as to whether or not this was a decision with a net positive outcome, but it was a crucial step to moving us away from eating bugs off a stick and towards inventing the bicycle. So overall, I'm a fan. And that's my intro. That's what I'm going with. Slightly fanciful, possibly, but hopefully you'll see the connection when I start talking about this. This is a new tent that I've been sent by the wonderful people at Tensile who, for reasons best known to themselves, continue to lavish a probably unwarranted amount of attention on this channel despite my ongoing assertion that I'm not going to say something's good just because they send me a freebie. That probably is a net positive outcome for all of us. So this is the Tensile Luna. It's a two-person, three-season tent. And unlike everything else in Tensile's range, it's not designed to be suspended between trees. It is, in fact, a standard tent. And Tensile were very much at pains to point out to me that it is designed to be a standard tent. This is not intended to be an offering to the ultralight community. Um, as you can see, it's quite big dimensions wise. Uh, I threw it on my kitchen scales this morning and it logged over three and a half kilograms. But I haven't opened this bag yet. I've been rather busy recently, hence my lack of videos. Sorry about that. But it means that this arrived in the post, came out of its box. I don't know what's in there. There could be all kinds of spares. There could be superfluous bits and pieces. There could be a two kilogram leather bound handwritten manual on vellum for all I know. So this is as much an unboxing as it is a first pitch and first kind of thoughts on the tensile Luna. What I'm hoping is that this bag, which you can currently get for under 200 quid, will reveal a really solid, sturdy, comfortable, easy to use tent. Because that is, I think, where tensile have their pedigree and their experience. You know, they have to make sturdy gear or people will be doing unexpected plummeting, which is never a good thing. Um, yeah, I have no idea. Let's get pitched and have a look. So on first unbagging, my initial hopes of sturdiness are being tickled quite nicely. I mean, even the bag itself. This is, it's sturdy, it's thick nylon, the straps are, are chunky, the toggles are heavy plastic. It's all, you know, it's all nicely stitched. It feels like you could stuff things into this bag for many a year without it busting, which does happen on some tents. I mean, similarly, the inner and the outer, they're, they're weighty, you know, the canvas feels pretty sturdy. The ground sheet, I mean, that's, that's like a tarp, that is, that's thicker than a lot of tarps. That is a really sturdy ground sheet. And I believe it's full size two porches from what I've seen on the website. I don't know, we shall see shortly. Um, we've got 10 pretty meaty uh, tri-star type tent pegs. The poles are, they're long, but then I'm used to the short stick ones in my big Agnes. So I guess they're not that long. Um, you know, the, the joints are chunky. Everything feels meaty and sturdy, which is as I'd hoped. So that's the, the inner pitched. That was super easy. I mean, there was no calfskin handwritten instruction manual, but I didn't need one. It's a totally common sense pitch, absolutely um, without issues. The ground sheet is a beast. 
it's super heavy duty. It's like one of those tarps you put in the back of your car when you're taking loads of stuff to the tip. Um, nothing is getting through that. I mean, other than the little holes at the pegging out points, you could pitch this on bog and you'd stay dry, I reckon. It's, it's incredible. Um, it's also, it's not just a flat ground sheet, it's kind of bathtub. It's got this lip all around the edge, which would just be that extra little bit of protection against all that nature that's trying to get in your tent with you. Um, volume wise, I mean, compared to my copper spur, it looks massive. It uh, looks like it's gonna have plenty of headroom, plenty of room for two, um, as long as you're good mates. Loads of um, openings as well. It's got two full doors, one on each side. Both have a full porch vestibule area. And then at the ends, it's also got these triangular kind of extra vents. So for summer camping, you would go about as far as you can towards avoiding that thing of freezing your ass off in the tent until suddenly the sun rises and it goes to 400 degrees and you're baking. Yeah, this would be very, very airy, I'm, I'm imagining. Um, what else have we got? Uh, down here, little, uh, little zip opening, which is for a power hookup. And this kind of goes back to my, um, my original point that this tent is very much aimed at the campsite camper, the car camper, the weekend trip, that kind of thing. You know, to be able to run a power cable in there from your hookup at the campsite. So that is that all pitched and sorted. Um, yeah, continued to be a really easy pitch all round. Um, let's have a look at what some of the bits and pieces that we've got. We've got a lot of air vents. We've got big ones at the end that correspond with those triangly unzippy bits in there. There's air vents on the roof. We got the full door either side, four guy lines. It's standard stuff really. Already spotting a few ways that you could save some weight on this if you wanted to. Um, the peg out points are this quite heavy duty tensile style bungee cord and they've got these little plastic hooks on them. I personally think the little hooks are probably superfluous and that the bungee cord could be swapped for something lighter. There's about twice as much guy line as is probably required. You could definitely cut those down um, to length. And the major thing is uh, the footprint. I mean, this definitely feels to me more like a tent that's gonna be at home on camping holidays in campsites, car camping, or very much shorter kind of backpacking, bikepacking trips, more um, comfort oriented. If I was pitching this in the summer in a nice well-maintained campsite, I would possibly consider not bothering with the footprint, I don't know. And that would probably save you a third of the weight or something. I'm not sure, I'll throw it on the scale when I get home and I'll um, put a shot in of how much the footprint weighs on its own. Now, <clears throat> other than that, let's have a look inside. Here we are inside the Luna, and it feels very much like a tensile tent. It's got the same feel as the tree tents, same stitching, the nice heavy duty zips, the nice heavyweight nylon. It all feels very good quality, very well put together. Um, it's really spacious. Look at that, easily enough room for a friend, if I had any friends. Um, what else have we got in here? We've got two massive pockets at each end, really big, really high volume. They kind of feel like you'd get a bit of sag going on if you really loaded them up, but yeah, nothing too serious. You've got your vents at either end, which zip, drop down like that, and um, roll up to the bottom. You've got these little toggle hideaway things from there. I really like that. I think that's a really cool feature especially in the summer when it would, you know, it does get bakingly horrible inside tents a lot of the time. That would just let that lovely breeze come all through. And then equally, you could also open the doors. We've got doors, both sides, full zip that drops down. And again, you've got your little tidy away toggles down here. Now, tiny thing, personally, I think I would prefer a door that zipped 
across the top and the bottom and then fold it away up to the side. That just feels like it would be a little bit tidier for me, but that is a, that's a tiny, tiny uh, comment really. Got the same on the other side, same door around here, same vestibule out there. So yeah, it's really cool. It's, um, it's a great standard tent, which is exactly what it's supposed to be. I don't really know what else I can say about it. Um, maybe let's pop outside and I'll just do a quick wrap up, I suppose. At the top of this video, I expressed a hope that what I was gonna get was a sturdy, well-made, comfortable tent. And I am aware that if this was one of those videos where you had to do a shot every time I said the word sturdy, we'd all be lying down by now. Sorry about that. Um, but I think I got what I wished for. Is this the tent that I'll be taking on solo, self-supported, long-distance bikepacking trips? No, it isn't. You know, for that, I'll stick with the tensile Una if I want to be in the trees, Big Agnes Coppers Burr if I want to be on the ground. But is this the tent that I'll be taking on camping holidays with friends, on car camping trips, on weekenders when the weather's looking a bit more miserable? Yeah, it definitely is. You know, the fact that it's not ultralight means it comes with none of those ultralight responsibilities. I threw this down on flint stones and sticks and brambles with nary a thought. I wouldn't have done that with the copper spur. You know, it's big enough that should the rain come down, two of you could sit upright in there, have a game of cards, drink a coffee, and wait the weather out. It's a really practical, usable, comfortable tent. And realistically, that's what most people need. You know, the majority of tent users aren't going off on ultralight, self-supported backpacking adventures in the wilderness. The majority of tent users are going car camping. They're going away for a week here and there in the summer. They're staying in campsites with electric hookups and things. And this is perfect for that. It really is. It's, um, it's not going to revolutionise the world of tent manufacture and design, but as I said at the top, it's not supposed to. It's a solid, worthwhile offering in the two-person, three-season tent area. And I guess my hope now is that Tensile follow up on this a bit more. You know, I would never want them to, to shy away from their roots as um, a company who make tree tents because I think what they're doing there is really exciting and cool and unique. But equally, I'm quite interested to see what they might come up with as an offering for a lightweight, one person, short stick, bikepacking friendly sort of tent. Um, I just think it's cool to, to diversify and to see what they can do. I mean, I've had a few thoughts that I'll definitely be feeding back to them. If you have thoughts as well, please let me know because you know this is their first stab at a ground tent and as a company, they are very open to feedback. They listen to what people are saying and they seem to act on those, um, those points as well. So yeah, let me know what you think. I'm not sleeping in it tonight, I'm afraid. Life is, uh, is busy. So I'm going to pack up, get home now, but hopefully there will be some overnighters coming soon and this will most likely be the tent that I do them in. So yeah, leave a comment, like, subscribe. I apologise for the slow upload schedule that I've been uh, on recently. Life's been busy. Hopefully come the new year, I'll get back on it a bit more. And um, there's a few plans afoot. There's a few plans afoot. Until then, from me, from my new tent, bye now. <laughs>